Hello everyone, George here, and doing a RuneScape video, and this is a very first episode into guiding yourself into becoming a very strong and high-leveled hardcore or regular Iron Man account. Uh, now, this is the way I would strongly suggest doing it. If you really want to explore, you know, Taverly, by all means, go right ahead. Now, this method, even you know, even though I'm not level one level 10 in hit points um, this method is probably the best bet if you want to get the most XP the safest way without needing to spend well have to worry about getting a lot of items the traditional way you know going out and getting it and fighting for it um, but now this way is actually very simple from the starting point just head a little bit south to here and sail this will take you to the dungeoneering spot and re there's a very big reason why I suggest doing this uh, right away for uh, hardcore especially and that is this way you can get your stats up there to the point where you can skip a lot of the low level stuff that really is kind of just a pain in the butt uh, and it will actually be scaled a bit better than uh, current skills actually well most current skills actually are not to mention there is a few things like you know you can go over here and start the sagas after you start unlocking them but that I would just do it for like completion because after the first completion after you get all the rewards for it the first time the rewards aren't really worth it after that however this is actually where a lot of the good rewards will come from and there's actually quite a few reasons why I suggest doing it this you know, go through dungeoneering, and I would actually suggest getting your dungeoneering to level 90 before you actually just go out into the actual uh, Gilinor exploring all around. I, uh, people would say going out to RuneScape, but it's just like, well, they call the world Gilinor, so let's just call it Gilinor, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, but I would suggest getting to level 90, and here, here's my reasonings why. By level 90, you should be able to afford the Bone Crusher, which is a very useful tool for combat and for other activities. Herbicide, very useful for combat, again, because of the drops. Especially if you don't want to keep constantly picking up your um, herbs. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't clean the noted herbs, but it'll clean the herbs that are just dropped. So you'll still be able to get the ones that are noted, and then also if you uh, take note from my uh, first money-making guide into the Third Miscellanea and Treasure Hunter, you're going to want to do this because well, you'll get a lot of your herbs that way, actually, is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. And then summoning for the Charming Imp, you know, you'll have your Charming Imp, you'll be collecting he'll collect all of your charms for you unless you just tell him to keep the charms and then you can get a small portion of the XP which again is very useful if you don't feel like having a large amount of charms in your bank uh, especially useful I would think for like hardcore and right, well, just Iron Man accounts in general because you'll be able to get far more charms than you will ever will gold to be able to keep up with your uh, charm to you know ratio so there's a couple things right off the bat I would strongly suggest and then there's also the gem bag and then the gem bag upgrade this way you can actually just keep going in combat collecting your gems now they don't currently collect them for you I would love to see that added to them eventually maybe another upgrade to the bags uh, but right now if you have um, what is called a legendary pet they will actually go collect items for you. Now it's not 100% guarantee per drop. It goes depending upon when you last killed something, like the time frame. There is a cooldown period, if you will. But now if you do it this way, there's also a lot of weapons. Now most of the weapons are level 55, but then they also have level, what is it, level 80 weapons, I believe it is. Yeah, level 80 weapons. <clears throat> and there's a lot of main hand and off land. There is a few two-handed weapon. You got the chaotic maul for the melee, 
and the chaotic staff for the magic. Now currently there's not a two-handed ranged weapon, which is actually kind of disappointing. I would love to see that implemented. Uh, but no, there's, there's currently not that. But then you also have the gold accumulators, which if you're at a lower level, collecting a lot of the gold that gets dropped isn't really worth it. <clears throat> you know, to take the time to stop and go collect it. Because you're talking maybe at most like, you know, 500 gold coins. And it's actually not even that. It's more like um, 5 to 10 for quite a while. And then eventually you start getting like 500 and then maybe 1,000. But once you get into the higher levels and you can start fighting the higher creatures, you're getting anywhere from on average 5 to 15,000 per drop. Now, I would use these only for one thing only. If you know the creature on average drops small amounts of gold. If it drops like 15,000 gold, don't bring this with you because you'll burn through it. And if it's 15,000, you're going to burn through it really fast when you could just take an extra five seconds and go pick it up yourself. Use it for the creatures that don't drop that. Leave it for the creatures that drop, you know, the one to five thousand gold, uh, gold coin drop range. Le leave it for that one, actually. Now, there's a few other items in here, but those are the most noteworthy items. I mean, there is a Tome of Frost, which can be useful, but it's primarily useful for the desert uh, which actually when I go to make my agility guide for the money making is actually going to come in handy which I'll explain when it comes to that video because it's it, it'll it'll make it worth to you if you plan on doing that route just for the money uh, the anti-poison totem, honestly, by the time you're level 60 defense and 70 herb lore, well, more of the 70 herb lore, by the time you're around that level for herb lore, there's a good chance you're already going to have certain invention, and there's a good chance you're already going to be able to make the venom blood perk, which, if you haven't done invention yet, the venom blood perk prevents poison damage. So there's really actually not really much point to the anti-poison totem, even if they do make it a pocket slide item. Uh, pocket slot item. Slight, yeah. <laughs> so even if they do that, it's not really going to be worth it. So try to actually avoid that unless you really just can't figure out invention and you really want a way to uh, protect against poison. But right now, it is a shield item, so keep that in mind if you do want to use that. Uh, there is plenty of necklaces, there is a few hand items like this. Uh, the mercenary gloves, range level 73, so I mean, it is actually decent, but that's up to you if you want to use your, uh, your tokens on it. I personally wouldn't suggest it. Now, the biggest reason I, well, there's a few reasons why I suggest going this way first. Not only, especially for the Iron Man accounts, you know, this way you can get the levels you need so you can actually start doing bigger stuff sooner. But you can also, you can get your weaponry. But also, once you hit level 90 in Dungeoneering, you will then unlock the player room ports, and you can actually start on that. And through the player own ports, you can get even more gear for whenever you hit level 80. And there's a magic, melee, and ranged armor set. And it's really good armor. I, think, I believe it's tier 85, if I remember correctly. So if you want to do, do yourself that favor, you know, just go ahead and, and if you can stay focused on it, stay focused primarily on... Uh, dungeoneering because it'll actually really help you boost up your levels faster and then by the time like by the time I got out of here with my first one I got myself the chaotic staff and then you know I had a very powerful magic weapon and I was at level 80 magic well I think I was a bit above 80 magic at the time so that enabled me to go and do uh, what is called the Bars Brothers now, for an Iron Man account, that is actually a big deal because the Burge Brothers drop level 70 gear. So, 
well they don't drop it you have to get to the chest and then you can get it and I'll actually do a video too uh, showing them because they, they actually are decent profit and they're very good for invention XP uh, because the gear is actually kind of easy to get so that I would suggest doing it this way. Now also, I mean, oh, um, as you're going through, don't neglect to do your challenges. Oh, lucky me, I got delve into Demonheim. Now, if you have the capability of getting into the Runecrafting Guild, I would strongly suggest, you know, getting the Vizwax whenever you get these and using it to extend your tasks. This way you can get two dungeons and then you get twice as much XP. Granted, you have to do two dungeons, but you get a lot of XP from these. So I would strongly suggest that if you actually can. Otherwise, you know, I would actually suggest, you know, do some normal dailies. Like right now, I would suggest getting the Laskillian pieces. You know, make sure you do enough skilling for that. Uh, currently, right now, if you're an Iron Man account, the double XP doesn't really apply to you, so don't even worry about it. Um... Ooh, sorry, pulled a muscle on my neck and it kind of hurts. So I, I, that's why I'm. I had plans on doing a different video, but I ended up doing this one because my neck's bothering me pretty bad. So I have to be careful how I turn my head. Um, but if you can get into it, I don't know if this account can yet. <clears throat> but the Rune Goldberg machine. Um, don't worry so much about getting the maximum bizwax you can. Because, I mean, you're doing it per day. Yeah, level 50 rune crafting, and I'm level 34. Uh, yeah, don't worry too much about getting the perfect amount, because you can get 100 per day. And be honest with yourself, are you really going to use that much per day? Especially if you're an Iron Man account. If you're an Iron Man account, you're probably not going to be going through that much of it. Just go ahead and, you know, get your regular stuff you would actually get. So, that, that is my strong point to this, is uh, do dungeoneering as much as you can until you hit level 90. This way you can start working on your ports, you can start unlocking uh, the different scrolls, and it'll help build you up very, very fast. Now, I, don't, I know I don't have it yet unlocked with mine, uh, that's because I did actually take a break back in, I believe it was Ju June, July-ish area. So I should actually be a lot further ahead than what I am, but I did take that break. So I'm a little bit behind. Yeah, I mean, do your normal activities, like do the daily quests or daily challenges, if you can. I mean, obviously, if you're an Iron Man account, some of them are going to be harder than others. Uh, pick and choose your battles with that. Uh, but that, that I believe is going to be my first and strongest recommendation is doing Dungeoneering. There is a few other things that I would strongly suggest doing, but it's going to take some skills to get leveled up, so you're going to be wanting to do this anyway. And as you are doing Dungeoneering, I actually have a setup that I would strongly suggest doing for it. If you're in a clan, uh, be of course be mindful of others you know when it comes to um, you know how you cap because a lot of clans they, they want to keep their clan citadel to tier 7 uh, this way you know everybody gets you know the best possible bonuses from it as they can but if you can when you're in the citadel you know do try to uh, go for the looms which is the crafting because you're going to want to try to get your ring of wealth as soon as possible too. Uh, a lot of people would say, well, there's the potions you can make now, but the potions are in the deep wilderness. So if you're in the deep wilderness, you can be attacked and killed by other players, and then bam, your account is done. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who would really rather not um, deal with that. But, you know... When you go here, collect your food. Uh, don't worry so much about runes like that. A glitch there. That's the only reason why I grabbed it. But, um... Yeah, try to get the food. And as for my setup, what I went for was actually magic. 
reason behind that is because as you get to the higher levels this is how you get your ring of wealth um, you want to be able to enchant and in order to enchant uh, the dragonstone jewelry I believe it's level 66 or is it 68 yeah it's 68 so level 68 magic is when you can enchant your dragonstone so that's how you will get your ring of wealth and if you want to make your well you're going to have to be able to make your ring of wealth you want to work on your crafting really hard because if you get your crafting up to I believe it's level 55 yep once you get that, that up to 55 then you can get your ring of wealth so that's why I suggest doing that because that's going to help you with your boss fights that's going to help you with your combat now I know a lot of people say ring of wealth isn't worth it but to be honest with you, it is. Because I get a lot better drops when I have a Ring of Wealth with me versus not having it at all. A lot of people will suggest, well, whenever you go bossing, don't worry about the Ring of Wealth. Just bring your, uh, bring a combat ring. It's just like, well, combat rings do add a bonus to your combat. Yes, there is no doubt about that. But is it really worth sacrificing your potential drop ratio? Me personally, I would rather go and fight the bosses I know I can beat, and know I can beat easily, rather than constantly having, you know, having less worse drops. You know, I, I don't want that. I want to be able to go fight something comfortably, bring a ring of wealth, get as many drops as I can, and make as much money as I can. Versus, you know, going to a bigger, stronger boss where I can potentially just. Um, you know get one big drop and it takes me forever to do now while I am going through the engineering uh, for the suggestions for um, Iron Man accounts I uh, collect your coins there is a reason for it and I actually skipped something in the beginning here uh, you do get coins right off the bat and there's some coins on the table too automatically grab yourself at least one anti-poison one thread and then just blow a lot in two feathers. I only want 150 so we'll go with that. But this way, whenever you do that, you'll have enough for fishing whenever it, you know you find the plot. Uh, just go around, look out for keys. Uh, don't worry, like if you want to worry about growing stuff here you can, but the farming XP here is not that great. Just like the rune crafting XP here is kinda low too, so don't worry too much about that. Go for more of your thieving, fishing, wood cutting, mining, uh, fire making, fletching. Well, let's just go over the skills over here. Uh, don't worry about the rune crafting in here, it's absolute garbage. Uh, summoning, yes, you want to do your summoning. Uh, since I seen the gold charm, I was like, eh, I might as well mention that. The summoning is very worth it in here. It's very cheap, very easy XP, so that you'll want. Uh, only do magic for so long this way your combat level doesn't get like too high with because of one and then the rest are really slacking uh, now see like once this hits level 68 I want to go up to melee I will keep a you know a staff with this way I have some something to alternate my taxes sometimes you do need that so you want, I would say, one projectile type combat skill, and then one, you know, regular, you know, melee skill. Try to go for the two-handed weapons, this way it's less on your binds. I realize I'm using a main hand and off hand, I know, so I'm um, probably sound a little hypocritical, but it's just the fact that right now, I'm trying to get myself established. That was luck, I had no idea that one actually had the key. That was just pure luck. As you're going through, uh, collect the charms equivalent to where you should be, you know, whatever level you would need. Um, yeah. Uh, construction, don't really worry too much about that because there's not really much construction in here. Yes, there is a few things you can do, but it's not a big deal. Uh, dungeon area, of course, that's what you're already doing, so there's no point in really explaining that. Uh, let's see here, what else? Um, agility, uh, there's nothing to really buy in here for agility, but do the plots when you can. 
uh, get the XP when you can basically. Herb lore, you can get some good herb lore XP in here, but I kind of just don't like doing herb lore. So that is up to your discretion. Uh, thieving, you've seen one of them bef uh, a little bit ago. Right there is a chest. If you see a chest, honestly, just go for it. W what's the worst that's going to happen is you can't unlock it. Maybe take some damage if you fail opening it. Uh, and then you got crafting. Crafting you really want to focus on so you can get your uh, ring of wealth as soon as possible. I, I really, really recommend doing that. Um, fletching. For whatever you may need, uh, you do want to try to do some fletching as you're doing this. It is useful. Uh, but if you are fletching, I'm going to show you something here after I get this ferret. Uh, okay, ferret being jerk. After I get this ferret over, I'll show you a little bit something with, I believe it's a ferret. Yeah, it's a ferret. Ouch, my neck. I'll get a few more fish because, well, I burned one and I don't have enough. because he fell in the portal. Which actually, I think during my Dungeoneering video, this one actually never even came up. So we'll do that. Yeah, you want to try to get him from that all the way to that. Okay. Now I'll show you a little bit something with the actual crafting for the fletching. Uh, now, even though this takes a higher level to fletch, you'll notice it gives you 16.2 XP per this one will give you 21.6 XP, so even though it takes less of a level, it's actually the highest amount of XP. So what that is, is it, it's the same thing for all the trees the whole way up through, is the traps. So whenever you're in here, if you have extra trees left over from... Uh, you know, cooking the food you get throughout, because I would suggest doing cooking in here too. Uh, whatever you may actually need yet. Once you're done with everything you will need the logs for, that's when I would suggest that either burn them if they're real low, or um, fletch them. I would actually suggest fletching them over the, anything else because. Well, fire making XP is very easy to get regardless of uh, whatever level you have. Uh, it seems like right now I can make actually a summons here pretty directly. And whenever you're first starting out, summons is a big deal because it's actually really helpful in the dungeoneering skill. Uh, I like to keep my left click option as my uh, call. This way whenever I'm going through a dungeon, I have it hotkeyed and I can just hit the X button. Ooh, so I can actually make another one above that, which is with the Marmorous Ore, so I can actually make an even better one, which is, it's giving me 43 XP now, so it's just like, why not, you know? Why skip out on easy XP? Ooh, uh, don't forget your, yeah, always be mindful of your keys. Um, but yeah, that, that's why I suggest this, this way you can get started with your Ring of Wealth and for... Uh, very easy XP with very little effort, really. Because if you die in here, oh well, you'll just start back over at, you know, the spawn point. You know, if you die in here, it's not, it, it's, it's not a game over death. It's a safe death. So try to take advantage of that and use the dungeoneering skill to the best of your capability that way. Uh, that's actually the main reason why I suggest it. The other reasons is for, you know, of course, getting Dungeoneering to level 90, this way you can get your port started, this way you can get going towards that good gear. Um, and then also so you can get your Ring of Wealth going, so you're going to need your magic and you're going to need your uh, crafting XP to go up. Now another reason why this is actually very useful, especially for an Iron Man account, is your mining and smithing. Uh, because I'm sure, as a lot of you may have noticed, uh, mining is kind of a pain because it fills up your inventory very fast. Well, in Dungeoneering, everything stacks, except for like cooked items or made items. So all my 
Marmoros Ore is actually just stacking and building up. So at the end of the dungeon, after I kill the boss, I can just, you know, go back to the center room, use up all my supplies, and then I got all that XP, which is scaled a lot better than the current mining and smithing. And so that'll help me get towards my invention XP. Yeah, so uh, back to what skills I would suggest. Uh, Slayer. Slayer is just as you find the creatures occasionally and get some Slayer XP. Hunter, um, unless you absolutely have to, I wouldn't really go for it because like you can trap some of those creatures, uh, but to me it's not really worth it because it's kind of a pain to constantly you know be making more than letting them go and you know whatever. Uh, divination I wouldn't do in here. It's actually scaled just as good outside as it is inside, and there's more benefits for you if you do it outside of dungeoneering. Uh, mining and smithing, like I said, big part do it. Fishing and cooking, do it. Really good XP in here for those two. Uh, fire making, if you don't want to do fletching, do fire making. Simple as that, but fire making is so easy to do regardless if, you, if you're in dungeoneering or outside of dungeoneering. Just, it, it depends on if you'd rather do that or fletching. Uh, wood cutting, definitely do it. Farming, I'll leave that up to your discretion per personally. I wouldn't grow anything. If you see some things like the solve weed or higher, if you want to go ahead and pick it to get yourself some farming XP, go right ahead. But the farming XP in here is kind of crap. So I wouldn't really do it myself. Uh, summoning, you already know, I strongly recommend doing summoning in here. Invention is currently not in here, so you can't do it, regardless if you have it unlocked or not. Uh, so that is my first video in. Uh, being able to do a strong hardcore account or a strong Iron Man account to get yourself started. Granted, yes, afterwards you're going to have to do a little bit of grinding, get your gear up there, but overall it's worth it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, later guys.